Okay, so yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Josh. Oh, hi, I'm Inchir, Product Manager for District Tracing at Einstein IBM. Yeah, and today we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, open telemetry and observability and, and using the two of them together for healthier software. Um, so today we're going to cover a few topics. First, we'll talk about sort of observability broadly and how it differs from traditional monitoring and APM. Uh, we'll talk about the, the components of distributed tracing and, and how it's a different challenge than, than what we're, we may be used to to coming from monoliths. Uh, we'll introduce the Open Telemetry project and, and its benefits and talk about why you might want to use it with together with something like Instana. And we'll talk about the different ways of instrumenting your services um, for tracing specifically. So we'll, we'll talk about um, some automatic and manual instrumentation methods. And then finally, we're going to show you what you can do with all of that data in an observability backend like Instana and how you can actually use the, the data to gain insights into how your software is operating um, or failing and, uh, and remediate it. So first, we want to just briefly talk about what is observability. Um, I'm sure this is a topic that many of you have opinions about. I just want to get us uh, all on the same page for this talk. So to us at Instana, uh, th this quote, uh, is a paraphrase of the original uh, 1960s paper by Coleman on observability. So it's observability is our ability to understand the inner state of a system by measuring all of its outputs. And that's very relevant to microservices because even though we can technically see into the communication between the various services, in practice, the complexity of the architectures makes that very difficult. And so with traditional monitoring, you know, you're know, you setting up monitors on known services and how they interact and communicate with your other services. But if that landscape is shifting too quickly for you to keep up with your manual configuration, then how do you how do you deal with that? How do you gain the insights that you need? And so with observability, and especially at Instana, we believe that to achieve this um, complete visibility of your application, uh, you need automation. And so that's why we try to automate as much of the process of gathering telemetry from all of your various services so that you have a complete picture that adapts and changes as quickly as your application does. And that then in turn allows you to answer questions that you didn't know you were going to have when you set up your observability tool, um, as opposed to just being able to answer questions uh, that you thought about in advance, which is not enough. Uh, so I talked about a little bit about telemetry data. Um, so Yinchi, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the signals that we're dealing with? Yeah, so basically there are mainly three types of signals. One is metrics, basically measurement of your services um, captured in runtime. And then you have logs, like timestamped data, string data, unstructured or not. And then you have traces. Um, traces is really about uh, give you a full picture of how your um, systems works. And we will focus on traces in this webinar. Yeah, and I, I think you know, like I said, like we said um, earlier, coming from a tr traditional application where you maybe only have one process running on, you know, one machine, um, mm -hmm. your logs are in effect your traces. You can yeah. go to your logs and you can follow, you can correlate the events happening in the software in the logs with the requests that triggered those events. Yeah. So distributed tracing is really the art and science of correlating end user requests with processes uh, inside your, your software, no matter how many services those calls uh, web out to. Yeah, yeah definitely. So um, it's definitely, uh, we people start to do distributed tracing because we move from monolith application to more distributed, like complex uh, services. Um, then you does not know like how it interacts um, in your system, right? That's why we need distributed tracing. <clears throat> um, so this quote kind of kind of lays out what we're talking about. Um, specifically, the traces are are made up of uh, calls and spans. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with this terminology. We're just going to review it briefly in case yeah, it yeah. isn't. Yeah. So basically, a tra trace is a series of calls, and calls are like this page said communication between two services it could be a should be requests or database queries um, or a, a message in your um, queue, message queue 
and a cause uh, could be uh, combined by spans like Andre's spans, um, which is um, basically um, a, a request recorded by your server um, because it's enter the your service or exit span, which is uh, more like a client request. It goes out um, from your service. That's why it's called exit span. Then if we uh, combine those two span, you will get a course. And also sometimes you will have like intermediate kind of span, like um, internally in your system, in, your, in that service, you have made some, um, I don't know, function calls or something like that. So here's a kind of an illustration yeah. of what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So basically this is kind of a trace. Um, so from like black box front view, maybe if you are e-commerce, um, like company, your clients make some requests, right? So maybe, I don't know, add a item to their uh, shopping cart. And uh, when they make such requests, it goes through your APIs and the APIs internally will cause some authorization, authentication to know if that's a user. And um, right, uh, if they want to pay, you will have to go to payment um, make some database um, calls and also um, call e external um, uh, third party external APIs um, to know, okay, if the payment is successful or not. So it's definitely a lot of um, like service or calls going on here. Um, that's why we need like discrete tracing to give you a full picture, uh, say if a customer cannot add their item to their shopping cart, you will definitely want to find the root cause very fast and distributing tracing enable you to do this. Yeah, excellent. And so there, there are some components that we need to enable distributed tracing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are those components? Yeah, so they're mainly we categorize in, into three components. So the first one is um, like instrumentation of your application, right? Um, it, you need to be able to generate those signals or in, in, in concept of distributed tracing, like spans or calls in your application, right? Um, to do that, uh, we can use Insana's auto tracer, which will do it automatically for most cases. Also, also you can use some other SDKs, like SDKs provided by Instana or open telemetry. Um, and then you need a collector to collect those uh, trace data. Uh, it can be pool based or push based. Um, and for the, that, you have um, you can use Instana agents or you can also use open telemetry collector. Um, yeah, by the way, Instana agent is also um, compatible with open telemetry collector. So it can ingest open telemetry data. And then you need to a backend, right? Um, because open telemetry really focus on data collection part of observability to be able to process your data and an analyze um, and maybe making some uh, actions based on the data you need a backend. Um, that's what uh, Instana can pro also provide, right? It's Instana provide you a whole ecosystem of your observability solution. Yeah, and I think this, this highlights a really important portion of, of open telemetry in general, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which is the portability of the yeah. data. So if your services are instrumented um, using the open telemetry SDKs or using uh, open telemetry protocols, then you can just uh, you know uh, switch out the Instana agent for the open telemetry collector or vice versa, or even run them both if, if you want to and use the collector to kind of direct the data where you will. Um, so that's, that's really, um, a huge benefit is you know you just you take care of instrumenting your services and then you know that the rest of the process will be handled one way or another uh, whether you're choosing a vendor solution or an open source solution yeah um so speaking about service instrumentation there are a couple different ways that we can instrument our services with uh i would say varying degrees of convenience for the developer yeah yeah so based on oh, here we based on here we um categorize them into three buckets based on how automatic the instrumentation is. So first you ha have automatic instrumentation. It basically means you as a like uh, owner of the service, you don't need to do anything basically. Like um, in some environments like Java, 
um, because it provides such um, a functionality of GVM to uh, a, a dynamic attach to the a GVM, like from outside through agents, um, then we just discover it and attach to it and then change some bytecodes and yeah, voila, um, traces are generated. That's the first way. And the second way is uh, what we call like semi-automatic. Like in some environments, you still need to do some configuration, right? But not like he heavy lifting kind of instrumentation. That's uh, is already uh, covered by like in Stana. Um, in some cases, maybe Python, right? You need to um, basically specify uh, this uh, environment variable auto wrap and it will uh, do the rest. Uh, by the way, um, this approach may be not needed in Kubernetes environments um, because Kubernetes have this auto trace uh, kind of webhook, right? You can have this uh, mutation webhook already done those uh, those things, nitty gritty detail configuration thing for you. Um, but in like normal host, you still need um, to do some minimal work, and then. No, like unluckily in some cases you still need to uh, manual instruments uh, your applications or SDKs. Um, typically cases would be uh, like um, C++, uh, which is a compiled kind of language. Um, so you cannot really do um, that instrumentation in runtime. You need to add some code there before you compile code um, to get uh, your traces generated. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so I, I think for me, the key differentiator with automatic instrumentation, um, and specifically with the Instana auto trace, is that you don't um, you don't even need to restart your running services. Um, okay. So, if if you have a you know if you have a Kubernetes environment like you were mentioning, ENG, and yeah. you install the Instana agent, um, at just you know as a sidecar uh, container in the environment. It will detect all of your containers. It will detect all of the runtimes, such as JVM, that that it's capable mm -hmm. of attaching itself to, and you'll mm -hmm. start seeing data. Um, uh, one of one of our um, engineers did a test and installed Instana on a completely new host, and started seeing the the completely populated infrastructure map within about a minute and twenty seconds. Um, yeah. So so that's that's very fast for Instana to kind of spread out throughout your environment and discover all of the things that that yeah. it can instrument. Yeah. With with semi-automatic instrumentation, it's still very easy, and it's usually just a question of changing, uh, you know, a few lines of config um, yeah. or adding a single library uh, to your service. And that's we'll give an example of that uh, towards the end of this talk. Um, manual instrumentation, open telemetry has come a long way in making this a lot easier. Um, you're not worried about trying to emit data in you know OTLP formats because for for pretty much any language that I've uh, had to work with. There's an SDK available from the open telemetry community um, and and usually instrumenting your your code manually. Um, you know, it can't find the code paths like it can with the semi automatic method, but really all you need to do usually is get in there and, you know, maybe add some direct um, excuse me decorators uh, to your request handlers. Um, you know, maybe some function calls to create new spans when you're starting an asynchronous request, but um, it's it's really a lot better than it used to be. Uh, so we talk about open telemetry a lot. So let's talk about it some more. Uh, what is open telemetry, and and why do we care? Um, so. Yeah. So a little bit about history. So open telemetry is a merge of two open source projects. One is open tracing, and another one is open census. Open telemetry right now is a CNCF incubating project, and it aims to provide a vendor neutral toolkit for harvesting your traces, metrics, and logs. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's basically the hottest topic uh, in observability industry, I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so, so why would you want to use it? Yeah, so as, as we already talked before, it provides your like uh, unified um, formats based on the open telemetry specifications. So you have like data probability among different vendors right? and uh, it can avoid vendor locking, right? If you, um, you can just instrument your application, use open telemetry and send it to whatever backend it would be, 
right? You can use open source um, based one, or you can use uh, commercial one like Instana. And uh, it's um, yeah, it's also like um, a common conventions across different technology and language because right now people use like different uh, languages uh, in a single system, right? Um, by using open telemetry, you will have a like unified approach. Um, that's what uh, open telemetry really shines uh, to provide a standard way and to avoid vendor locking, basically. Yeah, and I think I think it's really um, amazing, you know, that the open telemetry project is is able to achieve this, um, and that there's such a unified vision throughout the entire community. I think that's that's really. Um, Kind of the promise of all open source right is that you could have this this one way of doing things that is open and portable and then you have your choice of of vendors to back that up um so so it's really the best of all all worlds yeah yeah and i think another another perspective probably my personal perspective it's to have such standards is also great for like for for the earth like uh different vendors already uh, have like a, a similar approach, but basically they um, repeatedly done similar things. Uh, but if you can have a standard way, then um, you can save some like energy even uh, in, I don't know, uh, build your codes um, in different ways. That's also uh, quite uh, eco-friendly, I would say. Yeah, it's it's more sustainable, right? And it's yeah, yeah. it's easier than trying to wrangle, you know, fifteen different teams using. 15 different exciting new technologies um, yeah. for their particular stack it's, it's just way better yeah maybe it can save some energy effort to this so we can go to mars uh. <laughs> <laughs> one day yeah uh, so the the open telemetry is is cncf incubating as yenshi mentioned um it's fairly stable you can see here um the the only portion that isn't completely stable is is the logs uh api and sdk um but but we're using them right Yinchi? yeah yeah right so metrics are traces um we uh our instana agent can already ingest them and logs it will be supported um but since it's uh, still in an unstable kind of uh phases right now and the community is really awesome they uh, really aim to deliver it this year or next year um but yeah eventually uh when it's stable we will support it Allow me to introduce my friend Stan. So Stan, Stan is our automation expert and intelligent assistant uh, at, at Instana. Not really. You don't actually have to talk to a robot. Um, I know that can be an annoying experience for some of us, me especially. But uh, but yeah, we, it's, it's really just about it's about the automation and the intelligence that we can add to your data so that you can get to the root cause of your issues quicker and and also improve the overall performance of your services and applications. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So auto trace is definitely like one of most important superpowers Stan have, right? In Stan I have. And um, what's great about so our goal for auto trace is really um, to minimize your efforts to let you gain the maximum um, observability in your services. Um, so it can automatically discover your service, right? If, if it's in Kubernetes, if it's a, a normal host, if it's in container, and so which process it sets, um, it's at a Java application or Node.js, Python, et cetera. And uh, or, or it will collect those informations. And when uh, we uh, auto instrument your application, those information will be correlated. As uh, later in the demo, you will show, uh, you will see that um, like a full context we provide. And uh, Instana Auto also provide you a automatically created dashboard, right? Um, so you, you, you see, okay, how, how things goes and you don't need to um, create your own dashboard, but still you, you can uh, customize it. And uh, we also, based on, like I said, Instana is also a backend for observability, which um, uh, Open Telemetry does not provide or not aim to provide. Um, so we can um, utilize the data we get 
and do um, do data and uh, processing and an analysis based on the data like trace data or metrics data. We can set some alerts for you automatically. Like okay, this uh, this traces um, it's it's gone for for some sometimes. Probably you have some host changes. And uh, because in Stana also correlate with this information, it can also, also say, okay, there is one host that's uh, maybe full of storage or something like that. So you can um, get to your like root cause more quickly. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what in Stana auto trace aim to provide. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of an example of the smart alerts and, and the anomaly detection that Yinchi is talking about. You know, in a previous example, uh, we had an application with uh, a messaging queue in between two services. Uh, one of them is processing, you know, user requests, and the the servers on the other side of the messaging queue is handling rights to the database. So, uh, you know, a little chaos engineering. We take down the messaging queue, and Instata is going to going to create several alerts from that. It's going to notice that the requests on the front end service are failing or coming back with with the error codes. You know, however that front end service handles the message queue. Uh, being down. And it's going to notice that the backend service is no longer receiving requests. It's going to notice that the database is no longer receiving the same volume of, of traffic that it was. And so it's going to kind of sort all of those issues together and, and create an incident for me so that I can zero in on, you know, rather than having to deal with any one of those things separately, I can see the complete picture of all of these issues. And kind of from those data points, that's enough for for me as a developer and also for, for Instana to kind of go, you know, the problem is probably with this messaging queue that sits in the middle of all these things. Um, and so I can get to that you know, very, very quickly. And we'll, we'll show that in a little bit. Um, so if auto tracing is so awesome, then why do we even need open telemetry? You know, well, besides all of the reasons that we mentioned before, um, with, with data portability and sustainability and, and you know, saving effort, um, there, there's a few reasons that you would want to use both of these things together. So the first one, Yunchi mentioned, open telemetry does not provide an observability backend. Um, so you could self-host something like Jaeger. Um, you know, there, there are other tools out there, but uh, none of them are really going to come with the, the intelligence and the expert knowledge that is built into Instana. And as far as I've seen, none of them come close to the convenience of Instana as far as setup. Um, but uh, Instana supports um, most technologies, but as we mentioned at the beginning of the talk, observability really requires that we have a complete picture of everything happening within our application. And so we want to make sure that no services are left uninstrumented and, and open telemetry can be a huge help in that regard. Um, you know, we can use it to, to instrument the things that, that Instana hasn't gotten to yet that are maybe a little older or a little more esoteric. and uh, then we can also use it as a, as a migration path for legacy systems um, as we're trying to bring them into our observability framework. Yeah, and also like some companies, they have self-invent some framework, right? It's can, we cannot know you have your sets. Um, so in that case, you probably also need uh, SDK to instrument your application. And so to kind of give you a picture of what that map looks like, um, on the left, we have some of the technologies supported by the Insana sensors. And uh, yeah. me, on the right, we have the open telemetry libraries. Yeah, right. So um, basically we, um, for, for those that could be um, technically there are no limitations, we aim to provide you an auto trace, right? Like I said, we really want to minimize your efforts uh, um, to get your observability, right? In, um, but in some cases, like we talked about before, like in C++ or Rust, where you can have a kind of compiled uh, language, um, you probably need uh, to do some manually instrumentation. And because you don't want to be in vendor locking, um, you can use open telemetry SDK. And on also another example would be Cocos, right? So Cocos is really um, a hot topic in um, GVM areas. It provided it provides two ways uh, to uh, deploy your application. One way is 
like normally a kind of bytecodes and running JVM, things like that. And another way is that it can use GraalVM to, comp to, to combine to a binary. Um, in, in the later case, it, it will gain you some like um, super fast, uh, 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 run, uh, super fast like uh, loading time and uh, warm up time will be low. But uh, uh, since it does not provide this attachment kind of mechanism, like normal JVM provides, uh, we cannot auto trace that uh, uh, through uh, or JVM auto tracing. Um, then you also uh, maybe you want to consider use open telemetry um, to provide um, the traces. Yeah, definitely. So so right. So using you know using the JVM, you're firmly in at least within Stana, you're in the fully automatic category with the JVM because we can attach to the bytecode and, and inject what we need to and follow those code paths to, to detect your endpoints. Yeah. Um, with, with the native binary, which in my experience is just so much easier to work with, um, you, can, you can build an open container image, which is you know so easy to deploy just anywhere um, compared to you know, a Java jar. Um, and it also, like as you mentioned, the, the runtime performance, just in some quick examples that I ran, it was, uh, two orders of magnitude faster um, to process requests using the binary versus the JVM for the same code base. Um, so that's great, but we're giving up that dynamic environment where we can just attach and, and discover what we need to. And so, yeah, we would need to include uh, some library, but thanks to the open telemetry project, we're still in that semi-automatic category. We're not having to go in and, you know, decorate all of our request handlers because we just install the open telemetry library the open telemetry library is a you know specific extension for the Quarkus framework. And so it knows exactly what what methods need to be instrumented and what it needs to do. So setting this up uh, as, as just an example, um, and and uh, one of the things that you can find on our website, we should actually probably link to this. I'll I'll make sure that goes out, um, is uh, our open telemetry uh, robot shop. So we have a, an example application called robot shop, which is a simple you know, microservices e-commerce store using a variety of languages. And then we have a variant on robot shop, robot shop's little brother, Otel shop. And so Otel shop is fully instrumented uh, with open telemetry protocols. Um, we're still using the Instana agent as the uh, collector portion. Um, you can also run the open telemetry collector if you want to. Um, but getting back to, to Quarkus, so, so to instrument Quarkus, we install this extension. We install the Instana agent, which I'll show how that process in a little bit, but it's a one-liner. And uh, we modify one config key for our Instana agent. And Instana does support updating config via Git. So this is very easy to do. Um, if you have a, you know, if you have a lot of hosts that you want to enable this on, you just set up Git ops and, and take care of that. And then we just need to, you know, unfortunately we are going to have to add some configuration to our Quarkus application. And in this case, we will have to rebuild it and redeploy it. Um, we can't just we can't just do this in place on production. But this is this is a very minimal change to have to make to an application to get full uh, full tracing of all of your uh, endpoints. It's it's that easy. Okay, so let's let's show it. Time for a live demo. Yay. Okay. Um, so I was still looking at the correct screen. Everyone can see Hotel Shop. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, excellent. Just making sure because of the thing. Uh, so here is Hotel Shop running in one of our QA environments. You can kind of already tell just from looking at, at the golden signals here that, um, and, and this is actually a, a good time to point out. So in Stana, you know, we we really like to to highlight these Google SRE golden signals, and you're going to see these in a lot of views. These three these three signals, um, right, which is throughput, uh, error rate, and uh, average latency. So this is a demo environment. It's probably under provisioned, uh, and and you can kind of see that just just right from this dashboard. Um, one thing I do want to mention about this dashboard is I didn't build this. No one built this. We installed the Instana agent on our hosts, and based on the data that was coming in, we get this dashboard. Um, we can build custom dashboards if we want, um, but but for the most part, we don't need to. 
And it's not just about this one dashboard that we're looking at here, which is, is in an application perspective, um, which we'll talk about. Um, it's all of the dashboards throughout Instana. You'll see me clicking around from, from you know, services and entities. Those are all automatically generated and they're, they're designed to give whatever your team is, whatever your particular slice of the service is that you're interested in, um, whether it's you know, SLIs and SLOs for a specific service, um, whether it's um, infrastructure uh, and overall health of the hosts, um, there's gonna be a view for you that gives you the information that you need. Um, so I promised that I would show the installation. So let's get into here. And oh no, I'm in a demo environment, so I can't show that. But it's a one-liner. It's um, it, it if you go here um, in an environment where adding new agents is allowed, you'll uh, see the list of supported technologies and types of hosts that we can install on. So um, Kubernetes, Docker, right? Your containerized environments, OpenShift, um, VMware Tanzu, um, and we'll have specific instructions for each one of those. But it's it's just one command that you're going to copy in all of these cases. And then we can also support, you know, installing the agent directly on your hosts, whether it's Mac or Linux uh, or Windows hosts. Um, so, you know, in the case of a Mac host, like maybe you want to run um, the Instana agent in your local development environment. And that's something that, that we'll be talking about in the future as part of shift left. But um, really, there's there's no limit to where you can install it. Um, installing it in a containerized environment is incredibly easy. Uh, for Kubernetes, we have Helm chart or operator or whatever your, your chosen um, you know, tool is, we can provide that. And, and if you do it through the dashboard, that one liner is going to be pre-populated with your, um, your keys that are needed to connect to your tenant. So getting back to the actual data. So this right now, what we're looking at, we call this an application perspective. And what that is, is so we'll go to the list of all of our applications. It's really just a, a collection of filters on the services, right? So if we look at, at this tab, this is, these are all the services reporting to this environment. Um, and so I'm obviously not interested in all of these. There might be uh, you know, services here that are completely unrelated to my application or that just aren't the responsibility of my team. And so I need a view that, that excludes those and includes the ones that I care about. So that's where an application perspective comes in. And we can define this um, with just a couple of uh, uh, filters. So in this case, all we're doing is filtering on the Kubernetes cluster. And anything running in that cluster uh, is going to come into this application perspective. Um, so, so getting back to the application perspective, you can see we have our golden signals. We have our top services. We also have our time perspectives over here. So this is a really important part of your debugging and, and um, troubleshooting journey in Instana. Um, I know from experience that a lot of the times when you're trying to debug something, you might be correlating you know, logs from one service, metrics from another platform like Prometheus, and, um, and maybe you have traces somewhere else. And so you're kind of trying to zero in on, okay, well, this is the time window when this problem occurred, um, these are the hosts that were having the problem. This is the resource utilization on those hosts. And you're just kind of stuck in, in tab hell, um, you know, trying to, trying to keep all of this data in sync across these different services and zero in on, well, what is the issue in this, in this giant haystack? With Instana application perspectives, um, you know, you, you can choose any time frame, um, or you can also uh, use releases if, if your um, CI tool is, is reporting releases. And this is going to be sticky as you navigate throughout the Instana dashboard. Um, so, you know, if I choose last 10 minutes, that's going to stay as I navigate to other pages through to other applications, which is fine for just this. But where it really comes in handy is say I want to zoom in on, well, look, there's an error spike right there. Let's zoom in on that and see why that happened. Then I can do that. This is going to bring us to our unbound analytics feature. Um, so this is sort of your place to, to filter through and, and, you know, you can see we have all of these manual filters on the side that I can use to find the specific calls or traces that I'm interested in. And um, you, you can use this manually, 
But you can also get to it the way that I just did by, by being on a screen, choosing some data, zooming in on it, and getting the filters pre-populated for you so that you can see exactly what you care about. Now, this environment is not that interesting because we actually, I think our load gen is broken. So I'm going to switch over to our regular robot shop, which has a little bit more, um, more stuff going on. We'll go to the last hour for time deal. Um, so you can see there are a lot of JS errors happening here, um, but nothing that's really causing, oh, well, that's interesting. There's a, there's a huge spike in the load time right there. So let's zoom in on that and see if we can figure out what was what's going on there. Looks like the issue got resolved by now, but we'll pretend that it hasn't yet and, and see what's happening. Oh yeah, okay. So let's, let's specifically, traces during this time frame. And let's see the error. OK, everyone use traces 100%. That's smelly. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, so we can see all of these requests are timing out after about two seconds, it looks like. And I'm going to zoom into one of them. So, so here's a view of a, of a particular trace. This is a problematic trace in this case. Um, we can see the, the logs associated with this trace. We can see the calls. We can see the end user information from uh, you know, the end user monitoring, which is a JavaScript tool that you can install in your front ends. Um, there's also a tool for mobile applications so that you can get this, app, this information from native apps. And, and this is gonna be correlated with any of the backend traces that can be associated with this end user's requests. Um, so this is really a, a huge help in, in figuring out exactly what's going on and who's affected. And then scrolling down, we can see this Gantt chart um, kind of similar to the one that we were looking at earlier. So this is, is our complete trace and we can see that it's terminating in this uh, connection failure. So let's open that up and see what's going on here. Oh, okay. So it's failing to connect to the database. And um, yeah, that's that's probably at this point, we kind of know what we what we need to know. The database has a 100% error rate. Um, probably uh, either there's a catastrophic failure or there's something malicious going on. Um, but either way, we know what we need to do next, which is get this database service back online so the traffic can continue to flow. Now that was a troubleshooting journey where we kind of saw something, uh, you know, just through through one of our workflows, we saw something anomalous on a graph and we zoomed in on it to, to try and find the issue. But you'll notice Instana actually already knew about this issue before we saw it and, and was ready to alert us um, if we had any kind of alerting channel set up. So like I said earlier, you know, you kind of got Instana, it's, it's noticing all of the changes that's happening in your environment. So this could be things like a configuration change um, or none happens during this time window, but um, a configuration change, a service coming online or going offline, um, anything that's going to affect the Instana agent, um, maybe a new container gets deployed, uh, anything like that. Then, um, you know, as those, as um, things go outside of the normal band of healthy, Instana is going to raise issues. Now, these aren't necessarily actionable, um, but we want to collect all of them and make sure that we have all of them because there might be a bigger problem that these are going to be part of the picture and figuring out what that bigger problem is. So we want to make sure that we have all of the abnormalities logged and tracked for you. And then we can kind of sort those and see, okay, actually, we do have a big problem. We have an incident occurring, a sudden increase in the number of erroneous calls. And if we, if we scroll down to the related events, we can see, oh, well, the root cause of this was a SIG kill on the MySQL service. Um, so again, you know, the this, this second path getting through to, to this point took me two clicks. Um, I could do that in 30 seconds. I can see, okay, um, MySQL service is the problem. SIG kill, that, that's, that's bad. That's probably a malicious actor. So we need to do something about that. And that is sort of the power of the both the navigation and the intelligence uh, built into Instana and what we can do with your traces. Um, another important thing to mention is that Instana 
uh, does not sample traces. So if you're using an open telemetry collector, you can, a lot of the open telemetry libraries will have a configuration variable um, for your sampling coefficient. Um, and that's gonna be up to you if you're using open telemetry, but I would leave it set to one. Um, and that's how the Instana sensors operate is just no sampling whatsoever. Everything gets reported, which means any communication between any service internal or external is going to be detected and, and will become part of the map. Um, what those uh, zero, what that zero sampling enables us to do is create the real-time dynamic dependency graph. So I'm going to go back to back to a regular time frame. That incident that we were looking at has been resolved, and uh, this environment is set up to, to sort of deploy that, and then uh, you know roll back the deployment because of the incident being automatically noticed. So that's another thing that you can do with Instana is you can combine our intelligence with automated tools so that some of these issues can get resolved uh, with minimal or no human interaction or intervention. But getting back to our application perspective. So here we have uh, the, the application dashboard that we started at. And if I click here to dependencies, we're gonna see something generated by that dynamic graph that I was just talking about. So uh, this is all of the communication happening inside the robot shop application within the last five minutes. We can see all of the calls, we can see all of the services, we can see all of the databases. None of this was configured. Like nowhere did I have to go in and, and edit some YAML file and say, oh, this service talks to this service and this service is called this. This is all just automatically detected and, and built for us and it's updated in real time. So as services come offline or online, this is going to get updated. And this always up to date graph is what enables us to do things like if you, if you zoom in on a specific service, uh, let, like say the cart, um, we can see the complete stack of for this service. So we can see the application, the endpoints that it provides, the application that it's a part of. Those are the, the filters that we talked about at the beginning. We can see the four endpoints that it provides. We can see that it's running in a Kubernetes cluster. We can see all of our Kubernetes metadata that we could ever want here. Um, we can we can zoom into any of these entities and see the specific configurations for them. And then we can get down to the infrastructure level and see the specific hosts uh, that these pods are running on. So that's that's the power of the dynamic graph um, is that we can sort of correlate all of the activity within your application with the related services and infrastructure from the front end user all the way down to the bare metal. And speaking of bare metal, the last thing I want to show you, running out of time, there's there's a lot to show inside here. Um, so this is our infrastructure view. So kind of coming, zooming out from the perspective of a, an application developer to, to you know, um, ops or, or an SRE. Um, so this is kind of an overall view of all of the infrastructure reporting into this host. And right now it's sort, it's separated by um, zone. So these are just custom defined zones. You can see we have our our hotel demo, we have our robot shop demo, um, but I can also change this and I can you know, change the perspective to be by container instead of by host. So here are all of our containers running in those zones. And then I could, for example, say, oh, well, what Kubernetes namespace is, is the container running in? And so I can just kind of sort and filter this view. Going back to the host view, I can zoom in and you can see that each one of these towers is, is a specific host. So these are three Linux hosts running this Kubernetes cluster. And I can kind of mouse over them and see all of the services is as pancakes. They're kind of difficult to see, but you can see all of the processes and all of the containers that those processes are running in. And I can open up the dashboard for any of these. Um, so I want to make sure that we have time for questions. Uh, Yep. Oh, I do see that there are some questions coming in. Questions. Okay, so switching gears, and I'll leave the demo open as, as we answer some questions in case there's anything else we want to show. Uh, I guess that enabling open telemetry for an agent will consume more memory and CPU at the agent. How much impact will we have at the agent enabling this option? Inchi, can you answer that? Yeah, yes. So uh, with 
definitely aim to minimize the impacts uh, when we design the agent. So uh, for open telemetry uh, to enable this, it's just expose a endpoint, right? So it should it would be minimal. And if you still have concern, you can like you like I think you mentioned it's uh, in Kubernetes, right? You can limit the resource um, for agents like how many units of a CPU it should limits and how many units of memory um, you can limit that in Kubernetes. Yeah. So it should not be a problem. Our, our agent is very lightweight and you only need one instance of the agent per node. Um, yeah. so, so depending on the size of your nodes, it's it's it can become an almost unnoticeable impact. on. Performance. Yeah, I think that also answers uh, Emmanuel's question, right? It's uh, in, in installed as a daemon size, right? Yes. Okay. So Zia asks, uh, does open telemetry or Instana cover overall asynchronous workflows, e.g. an end-to-end -end order fulfillment um, to see how an order performed in various stages? Yeah. So I, I think it really depends on which framework it is, right? So um, it's it's really case by case because there are tons of frameworks out there. Um, if uh, we say okay, we support these frameworks, and if uh, you have asynchronous uh, handling there, we will still support uh, the correlations there. Um, but uh, yeah, it really depends um, which framework you are using. Okay. Um... Yeah, and I would say, you know, for, for some of those asynchronous tools uh, that you might be using in there, like Kafka or, or MQ, we handle that, I think, out of the box, correct, Genji? Yeah. yeah. And open telemetry is just going to require some some minor um, instrumentation. Um, yeah. Basically, you have to define the, yeah. You define the beginning and ends of your spans in your asynchronous yeah. processors, and you may need to um, put some trace context into, yeah, yeah, into yeah. your messages in order to... to um, get that to your downstream services. Yeah. I see there is another one, uh, Reina, come on, Instana, trace contains Instana and open telemetry spans. Um, yeah, that's a good question. We support it. Um, it you can limit uh, mix it and it will get correlated, but there are some limitations because open telemetry internally, it use W3C uh, trace context and it's only defined for um, for HTTP uh, calls, right? If that's message queue, they are not defined thing. But in Stana, we support uh, correlations through some message queues. Uh, for more detail, just check our documentation. Um, but we definitely support a mix of uh, Instana and open telemetry spans. Um, so Zia also asks, does open telemetry and Stana handle any time synchronization or clock skew issues in low latency? Mm. I'm not sure that I understand that question. Yeah, I guess that's um, like some low level thing. Um, I, I think it really depends on which runtime um, it is. And I mean, if you have further um, questions like how specific if you can specific uh, question later or get in touch with us, uh, we can get our engineers uh, or SME to answer those questions. Yeah, definitely, definitely reach out to either one of us, and yeah. and uh, we can put you in touch with people who can answer that question. Uh, that does remind me. For anyone who thought that my demo was too short, we do a live demo every Tuesday, and I believe that the link will be in the chat. So I definitely encourage all of you to sign up for that if you if you're hungry for more uh, of what Instana can do. Uh, okay, so the next question is, which SDK we need to use for the Node.js REST API to have open telemetry traces and metrics before making the case? Mm -hmm. um, so if if you want to use uh, the open telemetry SDK, you just go to the open telemetry project. Um, they have a list of supported languages, so you just click on Node.js, and they would show you um, the, the preferred packages to use. Um, yeah. But Instana Autotrace also works great with Node.js, so um, you could skip that and just use Instana. Yeah, and uh, another one is Dana Auto Trace for Open Telemetry. Um, I, I, I mean, if if that's, I guess that's similar to the previous one, right? So we can, you can mix Instana Auto Trace and Open Telemetry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, 
If both Instana and OTEL is enabled on a service, will Instana agent avoid instrumenting something that's instrumented by OTEL and just use the OTEL data point as is? Good question. Mm. Do you know the answer to that? I believe the answer is yes, that Instana will leave it alone because we do yeah. detect agents from some other observability tools and, yeah. and halt our operations if those agents are detected. Yeah. Now, that's a, that's a configurable thing, though. So if you're trying to do something really specific, um, you can probably override whatever the default is. Yeah, so agent provides a configuration, like in a YAML file, or you can use its Git ops. So just disable some Instana um, sensors will also be fine. OK. How is open telemetry different than Grafana? So Grafana would be uh, one of the tools and organizations contributing to open telemetry and that you would yeah. use open telemetry with. Um, I know Grafana provides a dashboard tool that I've used quite a lot. Um, I think uh, Instana dashboards are a little bit more convenient than you know uh, editing YAML files to create a dashboard, uh, but maybe that's a matter of, of preference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you would use you would use Grafana sort of as a backend, similarly to how you would use Instana, and you would be still using Open Telemetry uh, if you wanted to together. Yeah, so the Open Telemetry is really scoped to um, data collection. Right, so it's just let you create those data, but um, how to illustrate it and how to analyze it, it's, um, you need to another tool. Okay, and finally, we have a question about Instana self-hosted in a cloud platform. So I assume this means uh, the Instana backend is being self-hosted, yeah. which is is something that we do support. We do support on-premise installations uh, in the cloud or even in air-gapped environments. Um, we also are very excited to have OpenShift support for um, Kubernetes for uh, on-premise coming up uh, in the next quarter. So, um, but yeah, did, you, did you know specifically so where the logs end yeah, up? Yeah, it starts internally. You don't need to manage a separate thing to do logs. It's yeah. It is, I believe it would be Elasticsearch, correct? But it would be, you wouldn't have to manage it. It would just come with the, the Helm install for the backend. I don't know, but you don't need, you don't need to manage any databases or data storage. It all comes with the, the agent installation or the backend installation. Yeah, so those three signals are like native supported by Instana metrics, traces and locks. Do the SDKs have an impact on our application performance or our service latency? Not that I've ever noticed. No, um, we're, we're talking about if there's any if there's any difference, it's it's immeasurable uh, nanoseconds. Yeah. By the way, your English is not bad. It's great. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Um, okay. So when registering an agent. The console finds out, or do I need to register on Instana too? No. So uh, the one-liner that I couldn't show you, um, it will include your um, your agent key, and then the Instana backend will use that key to associate uh, the the agent installation that you've just done with your backend. So you don't need to do anything to tell it about new hosts other than install the agent on the host. Okay, we have about five minutes left. Are there any more questions? Okay, well, thank you so much for coming, everyone. I hope that, oh, here we have one more question. Okay, if, mm, nope, never mind. Uh, yeah, I hope that you'll uh, check out Instana. You can take it for a spin. We have a 14 day free trial, or you can just click on the play with button on our website um, and get into an environment very similar to the demo environment that I showed here. Um, we also have our, our live demos on Tuesday. And uh, if you're going to, to any conferences this fall, we might see you there. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shinchi and Josh, for your time today, and thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. We hope you join us for future webinars. Have a wonderful day.